Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Scents. Welcome to another video. In case it's your first time here, just know that I am a longtime fragrance enthusiast on and off YouTube. So even if you're a little bit interested in fragrance and you're looking to learn more about it and or you're already super into it, this might be the channel for you. As you see by the title, this one is on my top 10 designer fragrances for spring 2021. So with that being said, we might as well start counting down from number 10 because we've got a lot to get through here. And this year's number 10 is Mugler Cologne Take Me Out by Mugler. Now, just like the initial Mugler Cologne, Take Me Out here is also equally simple. It's one of those fragrances that you can just spam on your workout and or or if you are going to spend an extended period of time just doing anything active in general, I guess. You don't want something too complicated. You want something that's going to smell clean overall. But this one is going to be a little bit more interesting in my opinion. Just because I think Orange Blossom is such a fringe note when it comes to citruses or citrus florals. So you have fresh floral and green aspects here going on, which I think is pretty cool. It smells a tad soapy, but that's something I can get down with. Especially if I'm trying to smell or stay clean. You know, if I'm doing something active. You also have a little bit of a shiso leaf note here, so a tad bit of a green minty-ish touch on top of all that. And again, just a really nice scent to throw on, really easy to wear. So that's why it's my number 10. Again, it's Mugler Cologne Take Me Out. Anyway, moving on to the number 9 spring designer for this list, this is Encre Noir Spore by Lalique. And what I really like about this scent is that Encre Noir Spore is definitely a more wearable scent in comparison to Encre Noir Alexdrem or Encre Noir. And it's not like I found found those scents unwearable. It's more like they're just a more rugged experimental take on the vetiver note. Here you still have a little bit of that coniferous vibe. Don't get me wrong with the cypress and again the rooty vetiver dry down that's still somewhat clean but it feels even cleaner even more juicier with that long lasting top note of both bergamot and grapefruit. Just really really uplifting stuff. In my mind I just think it's the perfect budget work scent if you're looking for something that doesn't quite smell like you know the blue fragrances out there and or you're looking to save some money and you don't want to bite the bullet on like a Ter de Mez or anything like that. This one could be found nice and low on the gray market. So it's definitely one I would suggest you check out and one that I will have no problem spamming throughout the spring. So I can't wait to do that. Again, it is Encre Noir Spore by Lalique. Moving on to my number eight spring designer fragrance. Here we go. It's from Dior. This one's called Higher. And I genuinely think that the Higher line is really good for both spring and or summer. Higher energy specifically for the summer and higher for the spring. It is definitely a remnant of that 90s to early 2000s sharp aromatic somewhat metallic work fragrance kind of style. To achieve that specifically here, you have that pear basil cord that Dior is marketing on their website. It's an enveloping green kind of aromatic that kind of makes you feel like you're physically higher, like as far as elevation or whatnot. I feel like I should be like biking down a mountain in this, but to keep the scent cloud a little bit more intense, closer to the skin, but not really exploding off of you, you have a little bit of that cardamom as well, which will also, I always feel like, assist with the longevity, at least on my end. I guess cardamom just likes to linger off of me. And then here you also have some of the cedar wood in the base too. Nice masculine energizing kind of wood, but nothing that's going to be too pungent off of this scent. Again, the name of the game here is the fresher aromatic approach in the top into the mid. Again, something I feel like I should be on a mountain on and or a skyscraper. I think that storytelling in my mind is really, really cool. And one that just makes me want to aspire or achieve great thing. So I like using this one in the morning for specifically maybe a desk job. Like if I'm editing videos or something like that, I will chances are spray this scent. So if that remotely excites you too, definitely check out this Forgotten Favorite by Dior. It is currently a regional exclusive, so it's not like you'll be able to test this out in North America as it's restricted to pretty much every other continent in the world to my knowledge right now. So that kind of sucks. But if you can acquire a sample or a decant from someone, try it out yourself. Definitely definitely do so. I think it is worth it. Once more, it is higher by Dior. Anyway, moving on to the number seven designer spring scent on the list. This one is Musk Malaki by Chopin. And honestly, Forum, I've been on such a musk kick lately, especially the clean kind of musk that you can kind of spray on, still smell throughout the day, and it kind of just feels like your more natural scent. Here, that musky kind of vibe is laced with a little bit of cedar wood and black pepper as well. So you have a fresh, spicy, woodier take on this clean white musk. One that just smells like something that you want 
want to get closer to. This scent cloud is kind of enveloping. We're talking at least an arm's length, at least in my experience, when you are sweating it out and or under the sun. So just be careful not to spray this too much, especially with what you got in the base. You got a little bit of leather as well. And I feel like you even get a little bit of that at the beginning of the scent too, just because it definitely smells like a fragrance that is overall influenced by the Middle East. That's kind of what the Malaki line does for Chopin as far as introducing these styles to the West. So here you have something that's ultimately more wearable for like everyone, which would be, I guess, for the West, but again, with the inspiration of the Middle East. So of a more exotic take on Musk, but one that's still familiar, feels really cool to you. I definitely recommend checking this out. I think it's a lot of fun. Musk for the win. And again, Musk Malaki, my number seven spring designer fragrance. Anyway, moving on to my number six spring fragrance. This one is by Dunhill. It's called Icon. So we have yet another repeat offender on the list. And to be fair, it is always deserving to be on the list. I'm a fan of Icon for its unique take on the traditional masculine breakdown of a scent with a citrusy top, aromatic spicy heart, and a woody base. So as far as the top, the bergamot opening is nice and juicy, something that I want to drink. That's what it smells like. Got a little bit of neroli there as well for a sharper kick, as well as a fresh spiciness from the black pepper. Just really, really nice, vibrant stuff. Definitely something that is signature scent worthy in my mind, especially when you add a little bit of the more aromatic notes, which I think are making a little bit of a comeback. So you got a little bit of lavender here. Doesn't quite go into fougere territory, but again, you still definitely notice it. You get a little bit of an imitation oud at the dry down too, a little bit of Haitian vetiver. I don't really get the leather like the brand also exclaims on the website, but I mean, if you do too, I guess that's cool. It can't be that intense in my mind. But yeah, overall, again, I just think it's a cool way to follow the traditional breakdown of a men's scent, but just comes off as way more unique because the notes feel really, really modern. Again, I really can't emphasize by saying how juicy and sweet the bergamot feels here. It's like the top opening from a blue fragrance is what I'm saying, and you're gonna like it, trust me. So definitely check this out if you've yet to. I'm a big fan of it still. That's why it keeps making these lists, just does the job every time. It's Icon by Dunhill. Anyway, moving on to the number five scent of the list, crossing over to halfway point. This is Beau de Jour by Tom Ford. So here we go with an actual fougere, and if you don't know what fougere means it is in reference to anything that smells like a fern so to achieve that masculine traditional kind of vibe typically you use notes like lavender and here it's just used heavily very clean masculine and aromatic just awesome stuff but at the end of the day it is Tom Ford fragrance there has to be other addictive qualities to it other than just aromatics because traditionally that's not how this brand rolls so you have something sweet as well kind of in the mid end or dry down that feels like a tonka bean so one that I feel like either amplifies the aromatic notes and or also draws you in just because of that sweetness a little bit of patch and amber can't also hurt as well and overall it's just a unique modern take on the barbershop fougere kind of genre and it's almost like Tom Ford had to tackle this one right just because there's been such a shortage of barbershop scents at the lower levels of designer perfumery unfortunately. Not saying that this is a low level scent, it is a signature collection Tom Ford fragrance which is still very high and to be fair this used to be one of the private blends. So once upon a time you might have even looked at this scent with a little bit more cachet. But it's not like they changed the formula of the scent to my knowledge it still smells as good as the private blend version. So again to get that kind of quality for three figures less is just amazing at least on the gray market level so uh yeah happy shopping but yeah once more i couldn't help but want to put uh barbershop fragrance on the list so i'm glad i did again this is beau de jour by tom ford moving on to number four here we have another lavender scent but done in a strikingly different way this is that og shit right here it's chanel's platinum egoist and once upon a time this would have been the number one scent on the list i love it that much i love a good metallic workhorse scent that's just going to do whatever you want it to it's perfect for the morning for like a work day you can dress it up you can dress it down again it just does the job and hey if it's good enough for notorious big i think it's good enough for me too but yeah as far as how to achieve that metallic kind of vibe here you have some lavender you have some geranium some rosemary the way these florals and herbs come together just comes off as sharp in again some sort of alloy kind of way i just think it is really nice and fresh and again it's the kind of scent that i feel like i want to aspire to kind of like how the higher line from dior again previously evokes these elevated thoughts. I just want to try harder at stuff. I guess metal has that effect on me too. So 
that's cool. And just because I like the scent so much, I don't want to call it dated to kind of hate on it because I know some of y'all take that word negatively. It's more like it is a modern day classic now in my mind. So once more, if a metallic workhorse scent is something you think you'd fancy, definitely check it out. It is Platinum Egoist by Chanel. Anyway, moving on to my number three scent for the list, and this one is by Comme des Garçons. This is Kyoto. And Kyoto is part of the incense collection by Comme des Garçons, so each of them are based on a respective world religion, this one specifically being both Buddhism and Shinto. So here you have this Northeast Asian approach to incense, so it doesn't remotely smell burnt, but it is still smoky, if that makes any sense. Smoky in like a brisker way where you get facets of green aromatic stuff like cypress for example a little bit of vetiver too adding to its cleanliness overall and then when you catch a waff of this this is something i swear you're going to want to have in either candle form and or actual incense form and now thinking about that i kind of want to buy the candle version of this scent because i'm pretty sure it'd be that darn good but yeah sometimes i like taking this scent with me on the go save i want to place myself into more of a relaxed kind of state save i'm just chilling out i'm taking the subway here or there maybe running a couple errands just trying to lay low perhaps visit a friend or two or again just chill inside maybe reading something this is that scent in my mind the most approachable incense scent one that is not remotely going to offend anyone again in my mind that's why it's as high as number three on the list today once more it's Kyoto by Comme des Garçons anyway moving on here we go with the number two spring designer fragrance of the year. This one is 1957 by Chanel. And here we're taking a huge leap in price from Platinum Egoist into this for the second Chanel on the list. But God, is this stuff ever worth it for me. I really love how Chanel did their own modern take on a must scent, but still splashing a little bit more of that Chanel clean aldehydic vibe into it. So also with those aldehydes, you have a little bit of Neroli, you have a little bit of Iris. If you traditionally want to like stuff like Trentin Rue Cambon, for example, but feel like that's kind of too in your face and or you don't want something as traditional as a quote-unquote modern day Shepra. You want something that feels a little bit more down to earth like a modern day musk. I feel like this is the kind of scent you should be pursuing instead. I feel like the brightness of this scent is more evocative of anything to maybe like a 1932. Again with how it executes that very brightness with the aldehydes, the iris and the neroli. And then the musk is just something that I don't think Chanel's really experimented with. At least not in this collection and I'm glad they did just because it smells super good here. Again, I've mentioned that I'm a sucker for musk lately, but you combine the Chanel style with the musk, I'm like, wow. Doesn't remotely come off as brazen as, say, the Musk Malaki from earlier either. Again, that's going to be backed up with some darkness with the leather, while here you don't really have a lot to it other than, again, those aforementioned brighter aspects and one of those scents that I just picture myself getting afternoon tea with and I don't even do stuff like that but as a result you're going to want to dress up for this one not really a t-shirt and jeans kind of scent not at least in my mind so if you're a smart casual minimum I think you can get down with this and in case it's not for you or in case it's a little too effeminate don't worry I still think you'll admire the quality but definitely don't go around blind buying this one because it is not cheap but if you love it you love it again I do that's why it's on the list that's why it's my number two spring designer fragrance anyway moving on to my number one we're finally here here we go this one is yet again yo yo gi by comme des garçons so two chanel's and two comme des garçons to end off the list arguably my two favorite designer brands so no surprise here especially when yo yo gi was already my number one fall fragrance last year so to see it here yet again like i'm telling you like i really can't wait to go for a jog with this scent especially when this scent is supposed to be modeled after yo yo gi park in Japan. So to get that vibe here, you have a little bit of chamomile for something brighter and more morning oriented. Smells like something you're just going to want to smell when you kind of pull up to a park. You're also getting some cypress, some wormwood for a mystifying kind of intoxicating effect. Of course, that's a main note in absinthe. So that's exciting if you're into that. But my favorite part of the green is here is actually the fresh cut grass style accord. I think here it smells especially good. And yeah, I've sung praises about other grassy scents in the past stuff like Bleecker Street, even the Violet Leaf in Green Irish Tweed, for example. And while this might not be on the level of the latter as far as premium level quality, because here it is overtly still synthetic because of the Comme des Garçons style, I just like how it paints a picture here in my head with that park in mind. And it's really cool because, again, I've mentioned this in the past, but about a year ago, I was actually at that park with two of my best friends in the world, both Imagine Scent and Gen Sense. So as a result, this scent is just going to have a special place in my heart, but again, for that green spring-ish vibe, 
I just feel like this is my spring king. For me, it also has enough longevity to boot. Like, I have no complaints. So yeah, I don't know what else I have to say about this scent. If you can check it out at a local stock is great. If not, good luck because you're not gonna find this stuff gray market discounted at all. Chances are you're looking at retail, but again, it is worth a sniff. So please acquire a sample and or decant. It would be really nice if you could. Again, it is Calm de Garçons Yoyogi. Man, shout out to Monocle for a killer collab. I think they killed it. Anyway, that about does it for me. Thank you for tuning in yet again i think it's that time of the video though where i want you guys to tell me which one of these scents was your favorite and or the one you are most interested in checking out and also let me know if i missed anything let me know what your spring fragrances for this year are too if you guys really like the video please like and subscribe and if you have yet to also hit that notification bell for more because you'll get some of these videos even sooner if you do again it is free so please help a brother out but now with that being said i officially think that is about it now hope to catch you next time real soon take care for now peace out bye my name is manny where are your fragrances